God. And today we're going to talk about um, one of those um, lies we believe is um, that God is in control. We hear that a lot, but what does that mean? God is in control. Um, and also today we are excited that this is Children's Sabbath, and you may see some of our kids um, up here and their parents, and in a few minutes they're going to be participating fully in worship with us, and we are so thankful to have you here in New Heights Worship sharing with us as worship leaders today. At this time, I'm going to ask the congregation to stand and invite Lily to come forward and to lead in the sharing of Christ's peace. She's going to stand here at the lectern, so we all stand. And we're going to join in the litany that she will lead us in. Hello, my name is Lily Jones and I am in the fourth grade. Would you please remain standing for the words of pardon and the sharing of Christ's peace? God always hears the honest prayers of the community of faith. God cares for us as parents care for their children. God will have mercy upon us and deal with us in loving kindness. God will forgive our sins and restore us to a warm relationship. Let us share Christ's peace with those around us. contain its praise the mighty waves roar the mighty waves roar and all of creation is singing the same song one hallelujah to you and you alone here's what we sing holy holy to the one who scattered the stars Holy, holy to the one who holds every heart. All of our praise, all for your name. With creation we sing along. Holy, holy. My heart cannot contain your love. So I will rejoice, I will rejoice. A melody is rising up. Great are you, Lord, great are you, Lord. And all the creation is singing the same song. One hallelujah to you and you. Sing that chorus. Holy, holy to the one who scatters stars. Holy, holy to the one who holds every heart. All of our praise, all for your name. With creation we sing along. Holy, holy. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, He reigns forevermore. Holy, holy, and all the creation is singing the same song. 
one hallelujah to you and you alone sing with us holy holy to the one who scattered the stars holy holy to the one who holds every You know, one of my favorite lines in that song, that second line that says, to the one who holds every heart. And I love it when we sing together because it gives us an opportunity to all say the same truth at the same time and to remind ourselves that we have a God that doesn't leave anybody behind, right? He holds every heart. Every single one of our lives are held in his hands. And what excites me about that is not just the happy heart, but it's the broken heart. It's not just the included heart, but it's the marginalized heart. He has every single one of us. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes um, it gets a little hard to smile, you know? When I wake up in the morning and I just, I'm not feeling it, man. I just, if I could stay in bed all day, I got some witnesses out. You don't have to say amen, but I know I'm preaching right now. (laughs) And sometimes just putting my feet on the floor seems like it's going to be the biggest challenge of the day. And I think if I can just do that. And what I love about God is sometimes, yeah, the smile is not as genuine as I'd like for it to be. But if I try, if I'll curve up the other ends of my mouth, God just seems to put people in my path along the way in the day to help me maintain that smile. And because I'm in Christ, I'm never alone. And what I found out is is at the end of the day or in the middle of the day, it's no longer a struggle. I've met you, I've seen other people, I've known the presence of God is with me, and it just gives me that confidence to know that everything's going to be okay. So uh, my second part of the service that I love the best is passing of the peace, and I know we've already done that, but you and I have this unique gift. We can make one another feel better by sharing the peace of God that's on the inside of us. So we're going to sing this next song, it's called Smile, Even Though I Hurt, I Smile, Uh, even sometimes it's been a long time that I feel like I can smile, but we do it anyway. So as we sing this song, okay, if you see somebody that doesn't quite have a smile on their face, would you just move out and say, Hey, good morning. I'm smiling at you. (laughs) All right. If we sing as, as well, here we go. One. Today's a new day, but where are my blue skies? Where is the love and the joy that you promised me? Tell me it's all right. I almost gave up, but a power that I can't explain fell from heaven like a shower now. Here we go. I smile. I smile, I know God is working, so I smile, even though I've been here for a while. I smile, smile, it's so hard to look up when you've been down. I sure would hate to see you give a crown. You look so much better when you smile. Tell me where are my blue skies? Where is the love and the joy that you promised me? Tell me it's all right. I almost gave up, but a power that I can't explain fell from heaven like a shower now. 
Here's what we do. I smile, even though it hurts me, I smile. I know God is working, so I smile. Even though I've been here for a while, I smile, smile. So I do look up when you've been down. Sure, I hate to see you give a pound. You look so much better when you smile. You just smile for me. Say that to the person right beside you. Tell them, say, smile, smile for, for me. me. Can you just smile for me? Here's why we ask you to smile. Oh, 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 you look so much better when you, oh, oh, oh. You look so much better when you, oh, oh, oh. You look so much better when you, oh, oh, oh. You look so much better when you, oh, oh, oh. You look so much better when you, oh, oh, oh. You look so much better when you, oh, oh, oh. You look so much better when you, oh, oh, oh. You look so much better when you smile. I almost gave up, but a power that I can't explain fell from heaven like a shower now. Like a shower now. So I smile, even though I hurt, see, I smile. I know God is working, so I smile. Even though I've been here for a while, I smile, smile. It's so hard to look up when you've been down. I sure would hate to see you give up now. You look so much better when you smile. So smile, oh, 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 you look so much better when you, oh, 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 you look so much better when you, oh, 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 you look so much better when you, oh, 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 you look so much better when you, oh, 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 you look so much better when you, oh, 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 you look so much better when you, oh, 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 you look so much better when you, oh, 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 you look so much better when you smile. And all God's people said, Amen. Will the children come forward for the children's message? And we'll have our basket down here, boys and girls, so that you can actually make a gift. <laughs> if you would like to, with Mr. Chad helping. Good morning, friends. I don't think you're on. Am I, am I not on? Yeah, I'm turned on. Good morning, friends. Okay, there we go. How are y'all this morning? All right, so I'm going to talk to y'all about prayer for a little bit. Um, so do y'all have people that y'all pray for, pray for often? Who? Oh, do you need the basket? You go, friends. All right. Yeah, so, does anyone can anyone think of anyone that they pray for often? Like your mom, your dad, your friends. Yeah. Everybody. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's a good one too. Does anyone else have one? So when I went to school, I had an hour drive home every day. And I spent that hour a lot of times talking to God and not really necessarily asking for anything, but just talking. And no matter what kind of day I had, it was always the best part of the day because I was talking to God and it just made me feel more comforted if I had had a bad day. Like I made a bad grade on a test. It didn't matter because God was there with me and we were talking. And that's just a really nice feeling. So um, prayer can have a lot of impact on your life if you let, if you let it and 
you spend time just talking to God. So later in the service, there are going to be handed out um, these little prayer cards that have the name of one of the kids in the PH youth, or the PH kids. Sorry. And so on the front of it's a prayer that people are gonna pray. And so I'm gonna pray it with y'all real quick and then send y'all back to your seats. So are y'all ready to pray with me? Okay, bow your heads. Almighty God, I ask your special, special blessing on the children of the world. I pray especially for the ch children in my own life and my friends here with me, that their knowledge and love of you may grow each passing year. I pray for all the children in the world who are in physical need that they, they may receive comfort. I pray for all the children who feel unloved that they may experience your all-loving embrace. For you are the Savior, the Lord, and the King of all. To you I pray, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Go back to your seats now. Thank you. At this time, we'd invite Mary Harden Hastings and Jackson Wolf up to lead us in the prayer for children. Hello, my name is Mary Harden Hastings, and I am in the first grade. Hello, my name is Jackson Wolf, and I am in the fifth grade. On this children's Sabbath, you are invited to join in praying the responsive prayer for children everywhere, which is printed in your program. God, we remember every child needs food to eat but sometimes there isn't enough to go around. Every child needs water to, clean water to drink. But sometimes you have to go a long way to get it. Every child needs a home. But some children don't have one. Every child needs clean air to breathe. But sometimes it's dirty. Every child needs to be able to get medicine. But sometimes there isn't many. Every child needs to have the chance to go to school. But sometimes there are no books or teachers. Every child needs to play. Every child needs peace. But sometimes there is war. Every child needs to be able to decide what to, to think and feel and believe. All over the world, people are working to see that every child gets what every child needs. This will mean a better world for all of us, and every child needs a better world. Let us play, pray together. Oh God, we pray for the children of your church and for children all around the world. May your peace and love be with them. Amen. Let us stand for the reading of the scripture as Lily Jones gives us that this morning. And the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Who is this darkening counsel with words lacking knowledge? Prepare yourself like a man. It will interrogate you, and you will respond to me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you know. Who set its measurements? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring tape on it? On what were its footings sunk? Who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang in unison, all the divine beings shouted, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us join together in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, either through me or in spite of me, speak the good news this day 
that we may all hear it, embrace it, and most of all, live it. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the risen one. Amen. Not long ago, I started to see commercials for the adaptation of the scary uh, novel and second round movie of It. It's based on Stephen King's novel of the same name. Just watching um, those commercials for It <clears throat> gave me chills. I understand, I truly do, that there are people out there who love horror, but I am not one of those people. Recently, I allowed my boys to pick out a scary Halloween uh, decoration. We've never purchased an inflatable. But I had a birthday gift certificate from a friend for a, from a retailer um, that went out in West Rock at home. So I was actually thinking about getting myself some pumpkin pillows for the fall because, frankly, I don't have enough pumpkin pillows in my life. And so um, that was what I was thinking as I went out there with two of my children. But I couldn't pry them from the Halloween decor, which is, of course, conveniently set up right in the front of the store. Thankfully, well, and okay, the, here's what we did. We spent $99 on an inflatable. We spent my entire gift card. It wasn't the really hideous stuff. I'm just, I'm thankful for that. It wasn't um, a humpbacked witch, you know, missing teeth and cackling. It wasn't one of those. Um, it wasn't a giant set of grotesque zombies um, or nasty pirates or night-loving vampires. It was none of that stuff. What they wanted and what they got was a dragon. I was relieved. Oh, yes, a dragon will be good. I, for those of you who don't know, I call myself the mother of dragons. I have four. It won't freak me out to have a dragon, I thought, because I don't want to be freaked out. <laughs> I don't want to be scared. I don't like to be scared. In fact, don't come up to me while I'm drying my hair and speak behind me, which my husband does, or I may whack you with my dryer. Do not tap me on the shoulder from behind while I'm reading intensely a book I'm into, concentrating deeply, or I might hit you with my book. If I'm deep in REM sleep, the deepest kind, do not say my name. My husband also does this. Do not say my name or startle me awake or I will scream probably really loudly, and it might scare you. I do not like to be scared. Certainly we all have fears. Adults are big kids with our own set of fears. I know adults who are still frightened by clowns and spiders and elevators and needles, as well as flying in an airplane, or driving on a freeway. All of us have anxieties, but our children do not have the experience to cope with that unfamiliar territory of fear. Early fears, I remember when my kids were really, really little, you know, loud noises, how they startle a, a baby or a small child, and tub drains. My nephew, I'll never forget, he was so afraid of drains, and he would call them whirlpools. It sounded so much more dangerous. And then there's storms. Once we went to a single-parent scholarship fundraiser, my husband and I, we left our firstborn. We didn't have our triplets back then, and my sister kept him, and there was a really bad storm that came through, and there was lightning flashing, and, and to communicate that, my my sister said, yeah, you know, she was with him. He was looking at the sky, flashing light um, across the uh, back window. That's, we have a large kind of bay window, and he was watching, and, and she, she knew it was upsetting to him. To him. She knew he could, that he, he was responding to it, and she said, yeah, that's lightning, isn't it? That's some loud lightning. And he said, Yeah. <laughs> 
He didn't talk, y'all, at that point. He was, he was mimicking flesh, you know, the flash of the light. I thought that was really funny. Are y'all away? I'm like, Jay, tap, tap. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he, he was very much afraid of storms. Um, it may be strangers that, that young ones are afraid of, or even world-famous Santa. Santa has pro people, and Santa has people who are a little scared of him. Because let's face it, that beard, it can be intimidating. Or even that jolly, ho, 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 might be a bit loud for certain temperaments. You know, I've, how many pictures, how many family Christmas cards have you seen when someone is plopped in Santa's lap and they look like, who is this <laughs> whose lap I'm sitting on? From early on, we develop the knowledge that we don't control everything. And thus, we human control freaks seek explanations that offer meaning and that give us answers to our fears and at least to manage our fears. I, I want to be able to try to manage things that, that bother me or just to keep them at bay. Too often, people of faith casually say things about God that are not reconcilable with the nature of God, the God Christians believe to be an all-loving creator. This is a way we manage our fears. I think when people use these statements about God, they mean well, and they're trying to make sense of an experience, but they haven't thought much about what they're really saying about God. They haven't thought about the consequences of their words. Friends, we must always, always and everywhere be cautious about describing God. For we often try to make God in our own image. And at the least, it's blasphemy and idolatry we're dealing with. Because every word that we say about God is always going to be limited because no word can actually encompass or no tome of book that can be written can encapsulate God. This is why our Jewish brothers and sisters do not even pronounce the, the word for the holy. Today we're looking at a phrase people use way too often to describe God. God is in control. Have you ever heard that one? God is in control. That phrase may sound very simple on the surface, very appropriate, very reasonable, but if we pay attention to it as a response to a variety of situations, it becomes clear very quickly that control may not be the best word to describe the work of our sovereign creating God in this world that God has created, in this universe that God has created. For example, as William Paul Young, author of the book Lies We Believe About God, on which this series is based, as he suggests, if control means whatever will be will be, no matter how horrible, and God is in charge, are we saying God is the author of evil? Is evil then a part of God's plan? That cannot be so because God, we believe, is all good and all loving. Then Young goes on to note a problem that a great many theologians, uh, way before William Paul Young, <laughs> have thought about this question and see with this phrase, these problems, that God is in control. He asks, think about this, does God have a wonderful plan for our lives? Does God sit and draw up a perfect will for you and me on some cosmic drafting table? A perfect plan that requires all of us to have a perfect response. Is God then left to react? to our stupidity, our inability, as we constantly violate perfection through our own presumption. Young reminds us that we are very flawed, limited, and sinful creatures whom God has given the freedom to make choices. We're not puppets. God doesn't choose to make us do anything. 
I can't speak for anyone else, but I've made some real bad decisions. I mean some humdingers. <laughs> I've sinned. I've hurt people. You know, I don't think it's very fashionable to say you sin anymore. I was at a church one time, and somebody said they didn't believe in sin, and I said, well, how long have you been in the church? <laughs> That's a joke. If you've been in the church any length of time, you know people sin. Um, I've hurt people. I've done what I don't want to do, as the Apostle Paul says. Yet, though we fail time and again to be the people we want to be, God has given us the freedom, see, the freedom to do evil or to choose good. And that's the story from the very beginning. And that's really the story, isn't it, that we have in this second chapter of Genesis? It's our story. You know, people want to get into all this stuff about history, you know, and, and are that really the first man and woman? That is not the point of that story. The point of that story is that is all of us. We are the human beings that are plopped down in this lush garden. Have you been to the Grand Canyon lately? Have you been to the Galapagos Islands? Have you been to some of the lush places that God creates all over the world? We've been set down in that lush and beautiful garden. And yet we are tempted by outside forces. But we choose to say yes to a wily snake hanging from a tree. And that has been our problem really ever since. Because you see, there's always plenty of snakes hanging around in the world for us to blame. Not because God put them there, but because the creation God has made is a free one and it offers choices of good and evil. We have a choice. But we're really good at passing the buck off to the snakes. Many rabbis, wisdom teachers, and scholars have studied the book of Job, which we read a very tiny portion of the over 40 chapters of Job. Has anybody ever read Job in its entirety? Job is one heck of a book. One heck of a story. If you hadn't read it lately, I'm going to commend it to you. Go home and read it this week. In fact, I really, we could spend weeks and years on this uh, delightful, it's pretty funny at times, and compelling story. Personally, I, I like to think of Job as a wisdom parable. It's a long parable, but it's a wisdom parable. And in this tale, we find a righteous and wealthy man, lest we forget, whom God tests by initially depriving him of all he has, and he has much. He has a great deal of wealth. He has a great family. He has it all. And then God takes it away, and then by restoring it again, we get to see the full circle, what happens. And we then ask ourselves, what are we to learn from this story? more than we can say today, of course, but there are several things I think that we ought to notice. Um, the reason, by the way, and I hope all of you can see it, um, some of you on the front row may have a little bit of a difficult time, but this pastel piece of art, I bought it when I was in seminary in Dallas um, from a Dallas artist, and um, actually a Jewish artist. And we put it in our worship space today to focus on God's creative power because it almost looks like the creation is sitting in God's lap, if we take that figure to be um, an artist's rendering of, of the divine. It reminds us first that God speaks to Job from the ongoing divine create, creativity, from the whirlwind. That's where that speech starts. Let's listen, or let's watch as we read these texts. Who is this? Do we have those lines? Who is this darkening counsel with words lacking knowledge? This is God to Job. <laughs> Prepare yourself like a man. I will interrogate you, and you will respond to me. See, Job's been doing all the, Job and his friends have been doing all of the talking. In other words, Job has obscured or darkened the very design of God's universe, that phrase about darkening counsel and words lacking wisdom. And he has done that using words devoid of knowledge. That's a quote from John Holbert, one of my former professors. God's charge also indicts Job's friends who have offered 
simplistic solutions suggesting that there is a simple reward punishment system that exists in God's universe. It is also why the biblical writers sharing the story of Job challenge such conventional wisdom. They are rejecting the idea that bad things always happen or tragedy happens because we sin or because God makes it happen. The story of Job rejects that whole idea and tells us, hey, these answers aren't that simple. Not in this incredibly complex universe. Something else to notice. God's answer to Job and company includes the friends, and it includes us, which is far longer than we read this morning, goes on to challenge Job and anyone who is unwilling to admit that the universe is far more complex and bigger and greater and amazing than we can ever grasp. In that speech, God lays out God's creative power in the world. Another quote from my former professor God says, there is my world, not some sort of a bumper sticker place filled with easy answers and clean, simple pieties. Not God is in control. Paul Young writes about his German friend, Martin Schleske, a world-class violin craftsman who describes the creating God in this way. Scriptures show me that God has the heart of an artist, not a grim construction planner. If the world were the work of a cosmic engineer, he would be in a constant state of discontentedness. We would all suffer from the constant nagging of a dogged designer whose plans just never work out like he intended or expected. Reality could never live up to his spotless construction plans. But a true creator knows he not only has to shape, but also endorse and allow. Wisdom allows things to grow and unfold. In other words, the sovereignty of God is not about deterministic control. God instead reigns with love and relationship, both of which trump control every time. I was listening to um, PBS this week, or PBS, NPR, and um, Terry Gross. I was listening to her show, if any of you listened to that, and she was interviewing a guy who's written a book about the history of TV, and he started to talk about um, how different it was when um, um, Sheriff Taylor and the Mayberry thing all hit. That was 1963, and it was not a comedy in which there were laugh track after laugh track or joke every, you know, minute or two or less than that. It was not that kind of show. And there's a, a track that they played, and the track was um, one in which um, Opie is very silent at dinner and somber. And it, the backstory is he has killed a bird with a slingshot. And he won't fess up to it. And you know how uh, uh, Sheriff Taylor always goes up to tuck Opie in at night. So he goes up. And he pretty sternly says, you shot that bird, didn't you? And there's no response. And he begins to point out what this action in killing this bird has done. And he, he opens, his son says, Pa, are you going to whip me? Am I getting a whooping? Because that was what people defaulted to in 1963, and we still do. That's called control. But he opens the window of Opie's bedroom, and what do we hear? He doesn't say anything, but we hear little tiny birds chirping. And Sheriff Taylor says, you hear these birds, these little baby birds, their mama, they're hungry, and their mama is never going to come home. She's never going to be able to feed them again because of what you did. And the guy's pointing out, the, the author, that that was revolutionary to see that kind of parenting. And that kind of love. 
Love that doesn't force or control, but invites us to look at what we do that is bad and evil, and on the other hand, the choices, the good choices we can make. Not to leave you hanging, Opie adopts the birds, he feeds them and lets them go, and it, so it turns out well. But remember, Opie is also an orphan, isn't he? Sheriff Taylor is a single parent. The last few months have brought some scary things to our world. Things that hurt people. Things that have threatened to destroy people and their lives. Things that make people ask, why me? What did I do? Why is this happening? These difficult and tragic events often lead us to say, there must be a plan and God is in control. But what, what I have witnessed about God's power and sovereignty in the world more closely resembles what God tells Job. We cannot imagine all that God is creating in the universe. We are on one planet. We cannot imagine all that God is doing that doesn't even involve us. But where it does involve us, then God is inviting us to co-create life to co-create life even in the face of scary things, even death. Surely then we Christians can confess how hard, that hard and difficult, even evil things happen in a free creation. But our follow-up question to that is, what is God calling us to do about these evil things? What I'm saying is, don't ask why is this happening, but how can we stop it? Don't say God is in control. Instead, ask, what is God asking us to create in this hard situation to bring new life and hope and love? When faced with how to help others in natural disasters like floods and hurricanes, and we've seen so much, we're still seeing it. Or when faced with evil, sheer evil, we see human beings respond in loving and giving ways seeking community solutions. Sometimes it's, it's activism and it translates into legislation for the future. Sometimes it's in giving money or other items and donating. We also see and have seen so many people rescuing people's lives, saving, physically saving people. And we've seen people holding one another. And we've seen people weeping with the brokenhearted. We, we see, really, if we'll open our eyes, we see the power of love at work in the world. If love is the essence of God and God is love, then we need to ask, what does God's love call us to do when the world seems out of control? Because God's love is always, always the response. Love was the response to the horror of the cross, the horror of evil, brutality, abandonment by hum humanity, and death. And yet, God's response was love. Love triumphed, and we call it the resurrection. And that, that is who God is. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we remember those in prayer this day, I want to lift these to you, and perhaps you will take these home on your worship bulletin. They're on the back, uh, listed for you to continue to pray for during the week. Our Christian sympathy is extended to Charlene Francis and family in the death of her uncle, Ray Tedford, and to Carol Smelly and family in the death of her sister, Ann Smith. Hospitalized recently that we are aware of are Edwin Alderson, John Alston, Gary Carley, Brenda Collier, Larice Dollar, Henry James, Frankie Kirkman, and Mary McGee. Our congratulations we extend to Lindsey Gillum and Joshua Thompson on their recent marriage. And we rejoice in the baptism of Hudson Philip Campbell, child of Molly, and John Campbell. Those are the ones that we are aware of and know that you have uh, concerns in your heart to lift up this day. At this time, we are going to have a special prayer time for all who suffer from violence. 
58 people we know were killed last week in Las Vegas, but I read the other day that 58 people have died in Chicago in the last 28 days. That's, according to statistics, that's 27 people um, in the United States each day. And so we pray for relief from this violence, for the workings of peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. At this time, Chad is going to light this special candle on the altar as our peace candle. And we're going to invite you to spend a few minutes coming forward. You can pray in your chair, uh, or you can come forward and light a candle for peace as the band plays. Holy God, receive our concerns, our worries, our anxieties, not only about the big things that are with us this week and have been and will be as we see images that, that frighten us and scare us and, and make us sometimes feel helpless. It's also the very small things in our lives, the things that cause us to be hectic and busy and our lives are crazy and feel out of control. We need your love. 
be with us. Give us a strong sense of your Holy Spirit and your power and love. Your power is your love and your grace, which sustains us. And help us to answer that question. What can we do? What can we do to respond in love? In the name of Christ, amen. As we prepare to receive our offering, um, I want to lift up that a week from today, uh, we are going to have lunch in here. Now, right now, our registration is at about 28, I think. So we'll probably not do that if we don't have more people. We need at least 50 to 75 people to have a viable lunch in here so that we can actually learn from one another how to build fellowship and community. So please register today or within the next couple of days so we can make a decision about what we need to do. Don't forget also that today is uh, the fish fry at Camp Aldersgate. And if you can't go, you can get your lunch there. You can go through uh, the drive through over at Canis by the um, Orthopedic Arkansas and you can get a takeout, and that will help support um, one of our wonderful United Methodist uh, missions, which is Camp Aldersgate. We have baskets um, with prayer cards in them, and we have children who are coming forward right now, and they're going to pass out some prayer cards that look like this, and they have the name of a child on each one and a prayer for children on the back, and we ask that you pray for the name of the child that you receive on your card. Put it up on your refrigerator or put it somewhere where you can see it prominently, maybe in your office, and that way um, you'll be able to kind of continue to pray for the children in our congregation. It'll remind you of the children all over the world who need our thoughts and our cares. At this time, um, Christian Lopez is going to come forward as our ushers also collect the offering, and um, he's going to pray for our gifts this morning. Thank you, Christian. Hello, my name is Christian, and I'm in the fourth grade. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all we have. Help us to share with others, remembering we are all your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war I can't my hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could. What tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead you have not seen So when all things be my life and breath I want one you, one Lord, and nothing less When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part I could walk through when you don't give the answers as 
share that love and we count on each and every one of you to do that all of us together um, we have a gift if you're visiting for the first time a gift um, out um, by the welcome desk please uh, stop by and say hello to me and introduce yourself and our next membership matters for those considering joining is today it's from 12 to noon you don't need a, a reservation just come on over to the parlor ask me how to get there if you have a problem with that let's sing our closing song I long for your embrace every single day to me.
can tell, one more um, Harvest Fest volunteer family um, next Saturday, October 14th, um, from one, I think, let's see, from, from one to two or two to three, I can't remember, but please let me know. We'd love to have you help out at our booth of selling books for school students at the Little Rock School District, putting them in their hands um, when they might not obviously um, get them elsewhere. It's the Open Book Project. Also, we have an interfaith dinner and conversation about interfaith uh, matters coming up on Wednesday, October 18th at 5.30 right in this hall. Um, and that's going to be a wonderful opportunity. Representatives from Judaism, Christianity, and Islamic faiths will speak about their faiths followed by a conversation. Hope you'll be here for that. Receive this blessing. Go forth and love God and your neighbor in all that you do. Bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ so that those who do not know that love will find in each and every one of us most treasured and generous friends. In the name of Christ, amen.